Hello and welcome everyone! I used up all my good beef puns in the beef broth video. All I have left is this utterly ridiculous one. Today we're making a pressure cooked beef pot roast. Since we made delicious beef broth in our last video, let's put it to good use. For today's recipe you will need a pot roast. I like to use a nice flavorful chuck or cross rib roast. One onion, several carrots, several potatoes, one cup of beef broth, plus a little extra for gravy, two tablespoons of soy sauce, two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, one tablespoon of tomato paste, some flour or cornstarch, and salt and pepper to taste. Optionally, you can also add one tablespoon of malt vinegar, one teaspoon of beef bouillon, and your favorite brand of seasoning salt to taste. You can make this recipe by roasting it in a Dutch oven, but it cooks much faster in a pressure cooker. Chop your onion into quarters and break it apart, then set it aside. Now sear the roast in a bit of oil. If your pressure cooker has a saute function, you can use that for this step. Since this roast is going to be cooked in liquid, this searing is very important to get all the delicious Maillard reaction flavors. Try to get at least the four main sides of the roast nice and browned. Once browned, remove the roast from the pot and toss in the onions. Stir them around and let them cook for a minute. Then add in the beef broth and using a spatula, release the tasty brown bits from the bottom of the pot. Next, combine the soy sauce, Worcestershire sauce, and tomato paste in the pot with the onions. Stir it all well and taste it. You can also add the optional malt vinegar and beef bouillon. If you think it needs any more of a particular ingredient, feel free to add it. You could also add a clove of garlic and herbs like rosemary and thyme if you would like. Now place the roast in the pot and close the lid. The cooking time will depend entirely on how done you want the roast. 45 to 60 minutes in the pressure cooker will produce a medium to medium well roast depending on its size. The roast I'm using today is about two kilograms or four and a half pounds, so I will be cooking it for the full 60 minutes. Then I will be doing a half hour natural pressure release. If your roast is one kilogram or about two pounds or less, I'd recommend starting with 45 minutes and a 20 minute natural pressure release. While waiting for the natural pressure release, remove the ends from the carrots and then peel them. Then you can do the same with the potatoes. We're going to be cooking the carrots and the potatoes in the pressure cooker after the roast is finished, so we want them to be fairly even sized chunks. I cut my potatoes into quarters and then soak them in water. Then I make my carrot chunks roughly a similar size. The water will prevent the potatoes from going brown while we wait for the roast to finish. Once the roast is finished, Turn the valve to release and let out any remaining pressure. Then open the pot, remove the roast, and cover it in foil to let it rest. Now you can add the potatoes into the pot, add the carrots, then close it all up and cook them for five to seven minutes. I put a lot of carrots in today so it will take seven minutes, but you can use fewer and just cook it for five minutes. If you cook it for less time and you find when you open it up that the carrots or the potatoes aren't quite finished, then feel free to close it back up and put it on for another one to two minutes. After they have finished cooking, you can quick release the steam, then remove the carrots and the potatoes from the pot. Depending on how much liquid you have, you may need to add a bit of stock or water before making the gravy. If you do add stock or water, make sure you taste it and season accordingly. Bring the liquid to a boil, then combine two tablespoons of flour or cornstarch with one quarter cup of broth in a measuring cup. This will be our gravy thickening slurry. With the liquid boiling, Slowly add some of the slurry while whisking vigorously. You can make the gravy as thick as you like it. I personally like a fairly thin gravy. If you need more slurry, simply make some more with the same ratio as before. Taste the gravy and add salt and pepper as desired. Then slice up your roast and serve it with potatoes, carrots, and gravy. Here it is, the finished roast sliced up with veggies and gravy. Now this roast and gravy are delicious on their own, but something that goes especially well with them is Yorkshire puddings. So be sure to check out that video of mine as well. If you enjoyed this recipe, then be sure to hit the like button and make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Today's gravy might be making an appearance again soon. 
in my poutine video. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video.